If asked in interview, do you know what is a filler cell? Do you know at what stage of the VLSI design the filler cells are inserted into the chip layout? Do you know the methodology by which the filler cells and the decaps are placed into the chip layout? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. First, we will familiarize you with the standard cell arrangement layout. This is not a standard cell, cell by cell layout. This is a way how the standard cell are placed during an ASIC design. Next, we will further continue our shown layout and how the filler cell comes into the picture. Next, we will talk about some fundamental design automation that is done in the industry standard tools for placing the filler cell into any SOC or ASIC design. Next, we will talk about the physical design aspect of the filler cell. Next, we will talk about physical verifications, especially the DRC aspect of the filler cell. And hence, we will conclude the episode. So, that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Standard cell layout. Here in this slide, we will talk about how the standard cell are laid in a particular manner during the ASIC design. We will have infographics to understand better. The standard cells are of equal heights. This is called track. Sometimes you hear about 60 standard cell or 90 standard cell. So this is the height of the standard cells. So 60, 90, these are basically the multiples of the track or how many tracks it will have. The standard cell will be expanded up to in the height, not in the width. And this is how the standard cell will be the height. So uh, when you have to use the 60 cells, you have to use the 60 cells. That means six times of the one track length. But what will happen due to the design of the standard cell, the width will vary from one cell to another cell. However, when the length is to a particular track length like 60s, 90, 70. There we will have different tracks on which the standard cell will be laid down. Now the standard cell are placed in rows with cells butting against each other. Butting against each other means this is one cell and another one is there. It seems like two human beings are sitting back to back. So that is why it is called butting against each other. This ensures the continuous well across the entire row. Continuous well means we have N well and we also have the P well, right? For the CMOS structure, right? For various standard cell, the continuation of the well should be there. And why we are talking about the continuation? Because that helps in the fabrication process and that helps in the mask design. And that will help you to get a better physical mask of the entire design. And better in the sense, better fabricable mask. That is the point of interest. So here we have talked about the tracks, right? So this is one track, second track, third track. Generally, we call this row one, row two and row three like that. And it will go on. There will be multiple rows. And here the box is this box, this box, this box, this box, this box, this box. These are standard cells. And you can see the green and the blue wires. They are interconnecting the different cells that we when we go further right for the design. This allows, this means this arrangement, right, allows to run common power lines such as power VDD or the ground that is GND or VSS through the cell array. So if we route one particular power track, right, say it is the VDD track, what will happen that we can give VDD to here, 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 here in this same manner. So that will help the power lines to be horizontal or vertical, maybe horizontal, maybe vertical, however the design is being done. So that will help in the power lines as well as uh, when we put in a row structure, we get a better physically fabricable mask. This ensures VDD or GND rails follow pins are fully connected. A desired design is implemented by picking up necessary standard cell from different such rows or column and interconnecting them as for target functionality. What you can see in this picture, right? So there you can see green and blue wires are interconnecting different standard cells. We have not named, but it's an overall block diagram, right? So there you can see these are interconnecting to achieve our target functionality as per our ASIC or SOC design. So now you have the basic idea how the standard cells are actually laid down on a physical floor plan. Now, let us dig deeper in the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. 
standard cell layout and pillar cell so here we have talked about the standard cell layout means how they are laid down in a floor plan and now we'll see that how the pillar cell is incorporated in this structure well here we also have a infographics for you to better understand definitely the last one was for your initial idea now we will have a much more uh, informative infographic so that you can understand better this style structure standard cells are optimized for area so generally we also have a episode on power performance area so area is a very good concern in the vlsi design in case you want to know about the power performance area how they are impactful in a vlsi design please go ahead and watch that episode the link is provided in the description or otherwise you can go to the faq playlist and there you can find the ppa episode now however the standard cell placement never reaches the 100 percent utilization that means whatever floor plan we we do we do not fill up the entire area with the standard cells although we will have some macros maybe some analog cells maybe some mixed signal blocks okay i am not talking about that but however even we are specifying a particular zone for the standard cell we are not filling up it entirely so there will be some leftover places which are not filled up by any of the design cells that are in concern any blank space in the tile structure is filled up with special cell called a pillar cell and also we have the room and we insert decap cells from the standard cell library again we have one entire episode on the decap cells in this faq playlist the link of the direct episode is provided in the description and you can also watch it from the faq playlist if you go to the playlist page find the faq playlist and there if you scroll down you will find the decap episode what is a decap and why it is used so so this blank space are filled up with either filler cell or decap from the standard cell library so these two are already available in the standard cell library you just to have to use them wisely and why okay let us see why we use filler cell and why we use a decap cell so this is a layout first which i have shown you these build up spaces are standard cells right you understand we have more compact rows now and we are not showing any in between spaces like we have shown in the previous one and this will be filled up by our filler cell here is the schematic here of the filler cell and if we go further here is our filled up structure which is done by the automation of the EDA tools and some rules will be there to fill up the decap cells and filler cells. Later in this slide we will talk about them. These pink ones are the filler cells and the yellow ones are the decap cells. The entire leftover blank spaces, the white spaces here are now filled up by the EDA tool and through a automation with a set of rules. This ensures proper GDS layer to pass DRC and sufficient diffusion and poly densities. Again I say why we need a proper density of the diffusion area poly area or the well area because the mask will be very very physically feasible for a fabrication that is why we need some continuation it's not all about our circuit or design also physically the silicon chip has to be realized in an environment where we are going through the different process steps that is the cmos process steps so those process steps have to be done correctly and the silicon wafer has to get a proper say ion implantation dose or energy or blah 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 whatever things we are going through in the entire physical process so there we have to have some physical basic requirements like having continuation continuous wells and etc so that our mask when we are taping out right when we are taping out as gds2 to the boundary that layout should be in a well shaped and physically feasible for the fabrication process the filler cell is an empty cell with power and ground rail. This is the schematic empty means it is empty of any functionality. However, due to the continuity, right, whether the diffusion, poly or maybe the NLP well, some CMOS structure is within. So if you think that it's a blank means it's completely empty, then you are having a gap. So it's no point having a gap because that will introduce discontinuity in maybe in diffusion layer, poly layer, NLP well, whatever is there. Hence, the blank means doesn't mean the real blank. It means it do not have any functionality. So the total effective area is calculated by the subtracting sum of all filler cell area from the total area of the standard cell tile structure. So that is of the total area of the filler cell. So you can have the visuals here, right? The pink ones are the filler cells and the yellow ones are the decap cells, right? So you can understand how much area it is covering up. Tools can calculate and give you. You don't have to visually go and measure it. The tools can give you the area which are covered by the filler cells. If finishing or sign off includes at the very least insertion of fillers and decaps, 
decaps i have detailed discussion on decaps on the episodes the link is in the description go there and watch that episode to go into the detail of the decaps i'll not discuss here because it has been already discussed why the decaps are used in the blsi fabrication process so here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide design automation for placing pillar cell now why we need the design automation i have shown you a small block diagram where the standard cell rows are there there are blank places but for actual soc design nowadays these are multi million gate design so it cannot be done very easily with uh, maybe visually so we need automation inside the eda tools whatever we are using for the digital design and in the physical design process and also which is known as the implementation so the tool EDA tool that you are using would be capable of doing some design automation. What are these? Here we are talking about philosophically. Maybe their uh, actual tool may have some difference or may have similarity. Whatever we are discussing, based on the tool, the version, and up to date requirements. But this slide will give you one initial glimpse how and what automations are done to place the filler cells. Pillar cells are inserted after all cells have been placed and confidence factor of design in meeting is high. So when all timing etc are there we have met right after that the pillar cells are inserted. Pillar cells will fill the row spaces which remain open as we have seen in the previous slide already. The PNR tools in VLSI generally accept tickle scripting for automation or it may have some proprietary tickle scripting. In either case, either you are using a tickle or proprietary language, you will get a proper training on that so that you can have uh, the well knowledge of the APIs that you are going to use for the automation. And just for tickle scripting you want to learn, we have an entire series and I think this is the most popular series in this channel. So you can go ahead in the playlist and see there and go through the entire tickle scripting Okay, with examples. It is good and link is also provided in the description so that you can go ahead and learn it. The tickle script traverses the standard cell row from left to right. It checks the adjacent cell edges, right? So that means we are saying that cells are sitting butted to each other, right? So there it checks for the edges. If the edges match, the tickle script moves to the next cell. However, if the edges do not match, the script checks the opposite side of the right cell and matches with the current cell edge. So it checks whether butting is done properly and it checks further. If it does, the script flips the cells and continues. So why it is flipping, right? Because it has to place the wells and the diffusion layer, etc. in a continuity. So there should be continuity and there should be as much as possible continuity and as less possible of discontinuity of the different layers for a good visible physically fabricable mask. If neither sides match, then a filler cell is placed between the cells, ensure that the design rules are satisfied. As power rails, horizontal power rails are, used, are usually built into the standard cells as speed through, leaving any space in the row would result in break of the power line. So here we have discussed about the basic design automation that is done inside any tool. We have talked about philosophically what happens and what, what happens next and what happens next to next. So this is what we have discussed. And when you get the tool and when you get the tickle scripting APIs and when you otherwise you get the customer their language any proprietary language you get so there you train yourself to use that language and you implement this kind of philosophical automation into a scripting and that script will help you place the filler cells and decaps there we are done let's move on to the next slide physical design aspect so here in this slide we will talk about the physical design aspect of the filler cell a set of physical only cells without any boolean function in form of fillers and decap cells are provided in the standard cell distribution as they are required during the digital implementation. Now why we are saying are provided? So we have 60, we have 70, we have 90 standard cell package distribution. So inside every distribution there will be respective filler cell and decap cells that means whatever type of track you are getting as a standard cell package there the filler cells and the decap cells will be there for in-depth knowledge of the decap cells please watch the decap cell episode and the link is provided in the description as well as you can find it in the faq playlist of this channel filler cells are important as they connect to the active implants that is n plus and p plus as well as n wells and power rails throughout an entire row so this is very important Pillars should come in various distinct widths where the width is an integer of the multiple of the metal one routing pitch that is tracked. So there could be different widths of the filler cell that will come along in the standard cell library to fill up different spaces. 
Pillars consist of dummy polysilicon and diffusion area which provide density. I told you because these areas will be needed and these areas are devoid of any functionality. That is what I told few slides back. These are devoid of any functionality. However, these will be there for the mask. The end product that is the mask should be a physically fabricable mask and of good quality. So that is why this is there. Some filler cells may include well taps which aid in the lowering of the substrate resistance. This is another factor, lowering the substrate resistance. That also a purpose of the filler cells, right? Both tie low and tie high filler cells are provided to avoid direct connections that is the ESD prevention to the power and ground rails for a need of a constant input. Now again we have an entire episode on that ESD how it is existing in the VLSI what are the prevention and etc etc. You can find this episode the direct link is provided in the description and also you can find it in the FAQ playlist if you go to the playlist page. Finally, some decap cells are provided to help mitigate IR drop issues during the digital implementation. So here we have mentioned that the decap cells are used for IR drop mitigation and in detail we have talked about in the decap cell episode. The direct link is given below and you can also find it from the FAQ playlist. So here we are done talking about the physical design aspect of the pillar cell. Now we are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. Here we will talk about the physical verification aspect of the pillar cell, specifically the DRC that is the design rule check. Commercial PNR tools apparently fix the minimum implant area, mean ion implantation area violations by inserting filler cells at final stage of the design. Final stage means when the timing etc etc are cleared and only there is something very small is remaining before it is going for tape out. So at that stage this is used for minimum ion implantation area DRC chip. Here is a uh, infographics for you better understanding. So this is the mean width constraint. So there should be a minimum width of the cells right here. Here if we have to use we can use a filler cell for satisfaction of the minimum width constraint. So these constraints you will find in the design rule document that is coming from your foundry. And here another design rule is there for minimum spacing constraints. So spacing between two standard cell A and B two standard cell here and there is should be a minimum spacing constraint. So that if we put a filler cell there of uh, desired width the minimum spacing constraint is filled up similarly here we can see that the minimum width constraint is done by the respective placement of the filler cell so these are some philosophical discussion that is the theoretical discussion of the design rules what are nowadays the latest implementation tools that is the physical design tools are doing for example, one commercial tool has a utility of define an implant layer group for filler cells so that each narrow cell can be padded filler cell having same implant type. Another commercial tool checks and fixes implant area violation according to the rules in the left. Left is the LEF file during placement and filler cell insertion. Another commercial tool offers voltage threshold aware filler cell insertion flow according to which the user can define the VT filler cells to be inserted between VT different VT regions. So this way different commercial tools will have different methodologies inside to place the filler cell during the design rule check. Here just an example so users can insert a NVT filler cell between the NVT and HVT cells. So these are different VT these are the threshold voltage NVT is some threshold voltage and HVT is some threshold voltage but which is not same as that one. And LVT filler cell can be inserted between LVT and NVT cells. So this way the insertion the design rule check could be based on the different VT cells. So here we have talked about the design rule aspect of the filler cell insertion okay filler cell is not just on only to fill the blanks it's not only the in the blanks it do have some importance during the physical design and also it do have the importance during the physical verification that is the drc design rule check as so here we are done our discussion let's move on to the next slide thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today